Hello. Welcome back, motherfuckers. We're at the Don't Call Me White Girl podcast. Yes. Thank you, Tom. You? Tom's Almost. Getting on point here, man. Um, Tom here. Tom flies so top of Philadelphia's own. And we have Phelps. Phelps. <laughs> Phelps is from Pluto. <laughs> That's where Phelps is from. Phelps is my um, arch nemesis as well as my, like, partner in crime here it's a very sticky situation stop dming me about phelps and give up that hole we all know that that's phelps sentiment get that hole up so it's like bitter pattern on me and the dm won't get it girl get over there and get it and stop asking me am i fucking phelps because i am (laughs) um i'm excited this week was pretty big wasn't it right yeah i did um lip service shout out to lip service that was a really cool situation um a little shady one I say she's little, but she packs a punch. That's, um, y'all know her as Angela Yee. I call her Little Shady. She's a Capricorn. Um, and my girl Gigi McGuire, Stephanie Santiago, and Laura. I met Laura. Okay. Gigi wasn't there. Gigi was out. And I feel in for Gigi, and it was super cool. Joey Badass came. Okay. Some of y'all know him as Unique. And I must say. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Unique as fuckable is what I'm saying. Joey Badass is a different guy. Probably fuckable, but it's not as fuckable as Unique. You know what I mean? Because Unique's a gangster. He kills people. And all girls like gangsters that kill people. Joey Badass is a fucking Aquarius. And it was his birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Joey Badass. Um, but he's cool. He's a cool guy. He's really smart. And it just highlighted what I already knew about Aquarius as being super califragilistic, espialidociously great people. We were talking about monogamy. And he was saying how he don't think men are made for one woman. In fact, like you, Tom, are in a relationship, maybe you <laughs> should go home to your woman and say, hey, Tom Flies is not meant for one woman. Tom Flies is meant for a few. And being that I'm Tom Flies, you should take it. That's what Joey said. LOL. <laughs> no, no disrespect. Everybody ain't Joey badass, though. Listen, mm. Yo, but look, he said that, too. He was like... Like, depending on the man is even more, you know. My thing is, some men don't want the hassle of two women, you know. And that's the only part that we didn't really get to talk about. I know, like, I've been in relationships where, like, not even accusing him of cheating, but bringing it up. Like, are you dating into somebody else or would you? And they're like, you think I could do you and somebody else? Because I'm a lot, Dre. Right. Surprisingly, I'm like, my mom calls me Hurricane Mona. Mm. You know, hurricanes destroy whole areas. Yeah, good one. we do. It fits me. You know, because it's cool, but it's dangerous. All of that, all of that is overrated too. By the way, all what? that the, when you get older, and you like shit start to become like you get obtainable, like two mm-hmm. women having two girlfriends, it's too much. You Threesomes, too much. Yeah. The older you get, the more you just done with it. I'm cool. I know, I know an equal amount of couples that did threesomes and it ruined their relationship, versus um, couples that like liked it. Like I've seen mm-hmm. it both happen, and most of the time, what happens is. That people will fuck alone. So it's us three. And now Shaquita and Lulu are fucking. They're not <laughs> even calling the boyfriend. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or vice versa. Of course, the guy would do it. But I don't know. I think to each his own. I never had a threesome. I am very interested in having a threesome. Man. And I've been turned down. Like every boyfriend I've had where I'm like, babe, let's spice up, let's get a threesome. They're like, nope. You know how fucked up of a bitch you got to be for your boyfriend to say, no, I don't want to do it with you. Nah. Yeah. I think you're going to kill I don't feel like doing it with your girlfriend is as... Lit? You probably want to do it with somebody. You see what I'm saying? I guess. Uh, I wish strangers. I, could, uh, I wish I could share an experience here, but my girl going to kill me, so I'm just not going to... Don't get killed, nigga. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. It, we sacrificing everything for this show to work but that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, We're yeah. going to keep our women. No, we good, you know. There, uh, now. I know the people at home want to know, <laughs> um, like why was why did my boyfriends both say no to the threesome, and um, both of them are similar. They both said I would, I might fight. They said that they think that I would attack the girl. Exactly, like your dick not even that good. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> well, one of them is really good, and you know what I said. I said to him, I was like, if anything, I wouldn't like attack her. I would just probably back off. You know, like a more watch. Like I watch and like give, let me like an eyes with you. Like I would watch and do a hand job thing. But I don't do hand jobs like this, but I didn't know if you would get the other reference. But it would more be like a, but I would be like, no blinking. Like that, Dre. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that's how I would think in my head. Like I'll just back off from the three. This shit got wild quick. And it's not even on the list. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, we just let you roll the bullets. Hey, yeah. My nose is running again. Can somebody give me tissue? We rolling. This, fuck it. I'm on coke, everybody at home. I just, I give it up. Every time these cameras come out, my nose is running. It's ridiculous. I will say it's a little chilly. Not as chilly as where we're from. <laughs> <laughs> twin, twins here. Um, no, but we had a great conversation over there at Lip Service. I swear I love it. I love it over there. Besides the fact there's nowhere to park, New York is a pretty cool place. Shout out to Uptown. Where that was that? Where were we? Where were we? Uptown, Manhattan, Brooklyn. Manhattan. Yeah. Whatever. We were somewhere with a parking with sixty bucks. Thanks, Dre. Um, this morning I did a radio morning show, uh, the Morning Hustle with L'Oreal and Headcrack. Shout out to them. They were real cool. Best part about the show, them niggas were happy as fuck. It was like eight in the morning. Niggas was like, "Hey, what's up? We been waiting for you. We so glad. <laughs> Sit right there, put your headphones on. Hey, we here with the morning hustle. I'm like, wow. And I kept waiting because I'm from Philly, where everybody's miserable. I kept waiting for it to, to cut the camera. They be like, "All right, watch out. That bitch gets on my fucking other day. you know." But no, like they kept the act up the whole time. I was there? They're actually happy there. Mm-hmm. Speaking of that, won't y'all spruce up a bit? We you here. Know? We here. It's gray outside. Every, yeah, it's no sun. It's cold. That, yeah. Everybody that came in that station though definitely came in high energy, spoke to all of us. Me and Phelps just sitting there being fully niggas. Hey guys, how's it going? Being like, fully niggas. Like, please. No, I stood up. I, first of all, I was standing up, walking around. He walked, so that's good. <laughs> um, no, but that was really a really cool experience, and the vibe is always on a thousand. Although I'm asked the same question twice. I keep getting this question all the time on the internet. I decided to ignore it, but now I'll feed into it. Because Lord knows I don't ignore much. The Ari episode thing. My girlfriend. My girlfriend here had a lot of, like, media shit. Um, Honestly, like, I really, really kind of choked. I'm trying to choose only addressing the positive versus the negative. But it's such a big thing. Like, where I go, I ask... And it's like, for the most part, it's like, of course, um, the thought of anybody connected to me, um, including but not limited to Phelps and Tom, like the fucking crackhead around the way, if I made him lose that car wash situation he had, I would feel a little (laughs) shitty. (laughs) Although, um, I don't feel like I did that to my friend there. I think that... um, this is a comedic podcast, and if you don't want to laugh, you shouldn't watch. And sometimes when you watch pieces of things, you could get kind of the wrong impression about stuff. Um, like I've said before, I've sung Ari Praises a couple of times because her, like a lot of my friends, are really loving, great people. You know, she's one of my cancer friends, my other cancer friends sitting right there, Jock. Cancers are lovers. They, you know what I mean? Cancers love everybody. Just They're just like that. Um one thing about you people at home, you don't know what it feels like to have 100,000 people saying nasty things to you. And it's a lot of pressure on you. And then we come from, all of us come from different areas, different places. And some of us didn't take shit in our prior lives. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard sometimes to ignore people. Um, I definitely think think things were taken out of context, especially the live and the other comments. And, that you know, and I agree with her where we wish that people would have focused on what happened. What happened was two black women, one that is a, like a Goliath in her game, another one that is pretty new, but her just kind of showing love. Her, let's be clear, her doing her friend's podcast makes a huge impact in her friend's podcast. Mm-hmm. No charge, no money, no shout out ass, just, yo, I want to do your podcast because I want to support you and I think you funny as shit and I know I'm going to have a good time. And that's exactly what happened. We had a great time. It was hilarious. The vibe, like the morning hustle, Mm-hmm. was on 100 and it helped me and that's what's missing in 2022 niggas don't highlight the help part the love part like yo this is my camera that bitch helped me a lot for nothing for no other reason but loving me and liking me and i think me and her share that sentiment where we wish that would have been highlighted because so many times black women are put to, put against each other you know how many times you call people ask me who you think not funny that's a girl or they say none of these bitches fucking with you and I'm responding with, no, Dreezy from Philly is just as funny as me. Tata's just as funny as, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm bringing energy of what I am. I'm not a bitch that beefs with every woman I meet. In fact, I beef way more with the men. Yeah. I have way more problems with fact. men. You know what I mean? Especially like old raggedy, ugly raggedy niggas. Niggas that look <laughs> terrible naked. You know what I mean? Niggas that look horrible, <laughs> decrepit, bony, ribs out, you know, looking bad. Wasn't for that chain. Jesus knows nobody would talk to you. <laughs> Those kind of guys I really had problems with more than anything. But um, not girls, yo. Girls are supportive. I always say it on here right now. Black women are making huge waves 
in the entrepreneur world. I follow Coach Stormy. Coach Stormy's a fucking beast. We need to get Coach Stormy. Y'all know Coach Stormy? Because I'll tell y'all about Coach Stormy. I'm familiar, Coach, Coach not Stormy. Coach Stormy's like from TLC. She balling. She's so motivating. All she do is work, work out, hustle, smoke blunts. I'll tell you about it later. I know you don't know, Dre. Um, but yeah, like that's more what I'm pushing my reality. And that's what I kind of see. I see a lot of women supporting each other. So me and Ari share that sentiment that we wish that that was highlighted in the interview versus other bullshit. And it's shitty that people tried to make that a moment, their own moment. Even if it's a moment that's something terrible like domestic violence. It's like, damn, don't turn this into that because that's not what this is. Of course we don't support domestic violence. We're women. Women are less stronger than men physically. Even you big back bitches, you can't beat your boyfriend <laughs> for real if he trying, you mm-hmm. know? So like, what woman you know that, that feels like, yeah, you should, whip, whip, come on, nobody champions for that and it's laughable and that's what you saw in that live, a person like, get the fuck out of here with that shit because it's bullshit. But once it's chopped down, it appears like, no. The truth is, she's solid. She's probably the most solid person I've met in this fucking game yet and that's big to say four years and you people have seen me work with a lot of people and I don't care what it looks like that girl has showed me real love and I wish that would have been highlighted um, versus other stuff but my dog making big money she's super successful and she's doing more interviews which I am here for I love watching her stuff she was just on lip service mm-hmm. um, she, did a few on a, she on a press run a couple yeah she's she killing run. it man mm-hmm. listen show love not hate okay let's manifest that um, speaking of fans saying dumb ass shit and doing dumb ass shit some fan some NBA young boy fan runs up on NLE NL, Chopper mm-hmm. right in the airport and he swings on him because He's in a cult. Yikes. NBA Youngboy has a cult. Now, I'm not going to like diss the cult because I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm like, oh, not all the way in it because I was super thug. I was like NBA'd out with um, Lonely Child, like that era. Mm-hmm. I can't front. I'm a little bit late on the newer stuff, but I'm definitely an NBA Youngboy fan. I know y'all see those memes where people are like, like I, the one girl drives off in the gas station with the pump hanging and mm-hmm. like NBA Young, young Boy fan. Yeah. <laughs> or the rough people with headbangers and shit like that. I think he has a definite huge presence on the internet, huge fans, and he can rap so well. What I like about him is that I feel his pain when he raps. I like that, like that authenticity, especially with him being young. And then he's super lyrical. His fucking um, Louisiana accent, like, love this nigga. So, mm-hmm. um, but you don't, don't, don't. Don't don't run up on nobody. I like, want to say that. Like, when do we draw the line between like because they got to stop doing that shit? Like, fans really just they they really think that the internet is like reality, and they will take like I think Young Boy is better than this rapper, and see the rapper out, and then and walking swing up and, on the rapper yeah, or yell crazy. pussy. I guess NBA Young Boy and Ellie Chopper have some kind of beef. I didn't even know about it, but it just doesn't make any sense. Not even swinging on him. Of course, that's like the the most to the farthest but even just going to his post saying fuck you you know what mm. I mean fuck you chop him young boy says like if young boy not coming out saying it why are you saying it but that blade go both ways because when people post me and talk shit my cousins you bitches are good <laughs> like y'all bitches good y'all don't give a fuck I don't know how y'all still have you still have your pages I mean I have cousins y'all know I call my, my supporters my cousins but that will send me dms of them threatening niggas lives like they don't give a fuck i mean and it goes on for weeks like look girl look what i said most of the time it's like oh i love you bitch but let that go or whatever but it's like when people love you they want to defend you and they know you kind of can't do it even though you bitches know i get down <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> either way it go both ways. Like me as a person with this huge amount of people that love me, like it feels good, but I don't want you to endanger yourself and I damn sure don't want you fighting, you know. And if you see me fighting, jump in the bitch. Get active. But you don't have to necessarily hit the person. Don't lick a in the club. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I don't like support violence, get rid of you know. Oh. Um, I don't know though. I think that it has to be a line and I also think that but like, can a fan be too dedicated? One thousand percent. I'm dedicated like this, bro. I didn't give a. I don't give a fuck what Kanye you can't do. Be too dedicated. I'm never talking shit about Kanye. Kanye, whatever he had, I ain't say a word. Not a thing. He said slavery ain't exist. Guess what I said? <laughs> I didn't not, but I gave it like a. It was rough. That was a rough time for me with Kanye, for real, man. 
What I did with Kanye was I saw what he was saying. And I also saw what he was in life. He's in that 1%. Maybe his aspect changed. His mother's gone. You know, you think differently with different, especially when you have certain experiences and interactions. This, what's going on in my life right now, is changing my mind about a lot of shit. But nigga, you know, it's you weird with, that with the Kanye thing, though, or somebody. People consider him a genius, and then people know that geniuses are off, but then they still right. expect Kanye to be normal. It, right. It don't and make sense. I'm a genius as well. I feel the same. I think I'm the same <laughs> as Kanye when you really think about it. I'm very, very similar. But I'm, I am that kind of fan. Like, Beyonce could probably throw a, throw a kid over a balcony. I'm not. Like, I'm not saying that. Fans are bad. It's, fan is short fans for. fans be too dedicated? I don't like that's a dedicated is a good thing. So fans can be the Obsessed. word. Yeah, fan is short for fanatic. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like you already. I guess is that true? Somebody check that. Check Google that, Dre. I think it's, I think it's a fan. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to Google it. Is fan short for fanatic? Really? The Philly fanatic, Fuck. nigga. The Philly fanatic with the long green nose. Yeah. Shout out to Philly. I love Philadelphia. <laughs> we Philly niggas, man. We're about to change the name to the yeah. podcast to Philly niggas. Because as you can see, it's not the Don't Call Me White Girl show because we don't have a sign. <laughs> can I tell a story about the sign? <laughs> Please yeah, tell it because they already going to be. Listen, we read the comments too, y'all. Just so y'all know. We read the comments. And you hurt people sometimes. You know that? Sometimes that stuff hurts. I saw somebody say something like, damn, Phelps really is little. It's not appropriate. And it's unnecessary. And it hurts. Doesn't it, Phelps? No. It hurts a lot. He talk about it off camera. Say it to me, please. Please don't say it. <laughs> please don't say it to him in a club or nothing. Um the sign blew out because a bad bitch walked in. Or he walked in and the sign blew out. That was the first thing. And then your baby father threw it at the airport in Atlanta. Um and then like, I might have, like, took it to the car and tried it or whatever. <laughs> what? Say that again? No, say that again so they can hear I took my children to school, cleaned my house, read three books, <laughs> prayed, ironed my clothes, and on the way out, in an ice storm, I may <laughs> have took it drive it on the way out, whatever. So, it's broken in a thousand pieces, no fault of my own, and I don't want to hear a motherfucking word about it, you YouTube bitches. We're going to get it fixed. And we need to get a smaller one for when we travel. It was dry outside. <laughs> Dre's gonna make an image here of a new one. <laughs> you see how it glows? She, she, was, she was trying to hold it in one hand with the black in the other hand and the phone in the other he hand. He is <laughs> such a fucking genius, Dre is. And Phelps is an asshole. I say he's from Pluto, but he's really from Uranus. I like that. Fuck Phelps. I like that. So yeah, don't say that about the sign because it's gonna take a couple of days, and I don't want to hear no shit. I really don't. I don't want to hear no shit out of y'all. Use your imagination. Yeah. Real, real, real quick. When I was talking about Joy Badass being Aquarius, and I would fuck the shit out of Unique. Like if you play Unique while we were there, because we did talk about role play. Damn me. I felt like we was feeling each other a bit. You know what I <laughs> mean? Um. Do you date outside your zodiac? But y'all don't care about that because you men. I'm asking you girls. Damn. When you know that you have certain zodiacs and they're good for you or bad for you, like I know for a fact Leos are bad for me. Would I date another Leo? Fuck no. Do y'all date outside your zodiac if you really like the guy? I'm not a girl, but I will say this. Why do y'all hold every man to the same kind of like, I dated a Leo once, so fuck all Leo men. Like all y'all all the same. same. Y'all have y'all all have these two balls in one bag, and you have a penis on top of it, and y'all all act alike. Alike, like it would be like, like you might not act alike, like okay players, but players all act alike. You know, like good guys. Good guys all act alike. You know what I mean? I'm following along. Never met a Dre though. My first Dre. He's something else. He's a Scorpio. I would never date a Scorpio, even if he looked like Dre. You know what I mean? Like That's I'm cool. staying away from Scorpios, Leos. I'm about to stay away from males in general. Just get me some cat. What? Uh, mm. Mm. DM me. Stop asking people what their zodiac signs is. Just, just go with the flow. See how you. Because then it's like once they, once you figure it out and you find out, it's like, oh, you a Aries. Tom, like, you are totally a loyal, loving cancer. You're not an emotional cancer, you but know. you are a fucking cancer. Yeah, yeah. And this thing is a Taurus. I didn't even know about Tauruses until I met him, and now every Taurus is like him. They're fucking rough. They're hard to deal what with. What you mean? Like, I don't know. Y'all something else. I don't want to get into No answer. Story. Thank you. Like, just, I guess, like, stuck in your ways, kind of stubborn. You know That's what I mean? That's what they say. Um, I'm sure stubborn. They're not bendable. I'm super bendable with shit. Like, I try to be. I think that, I just, 
Listen, it's weird. It's against my religion for the love of God. But if I read it, it fits me. And when I read the characteristics of other people, it fits me. You know? So that's why I stick with it. <laughs> Shout out to the bitches with the sticks on Facebook. We still have it. Can what is that? Can one of y'all like tell us, educate us on the stick thing? Because we what, don't get it. What is it? it Basically, like, they, they do fortunes, but they use two wire hangers. They use sandwich and it's like, bag ties from the supermarket. They took them all. And the way they jiggle was how they answer the question. So it's like somebody would be like, can you, okay, like that's, you could say, okay, will Phelps ever not be an asshole? And then I'll take the sticks. And mm -hmm. the way they guide me, it'll be like, no, he'll always be an asshole. And that's how I know. And then it's like, you catch up me again and ask me another question. I get the hang of Oh, out. okay. I'm going to the kitchen, take the bread ties off the bread. He's lying about the bread ties. And twirl them. He's lying about the bread ties. Nerves kicking. Okay, Y'all know how I think. Let's go back. When we was talking about the whole fan thing, you know oh. what else I noticed? The dicky in his at an all time high. Like, yo, you know how many niggas I follow that are fucking 4P, 4PF or whatever? Oh, that's oh a, yeah. Niggas from Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a it's that's the real pandemic too. Why don't we talk about Clubhouse being a pandemic? That's a real like niggas Dickie really is. OTF tattoos, OTF chains, yeah. all OT, yeah. my name is Gremlins pushing P Yo, all that type of shit. No. Y'all <laughs> wore pushing P out so much, me and Phelps can't listen to it. Yeah, they burnt Dog it I hop just tweeted pushing P. Like once the white man in it, it ain't fun no more. I don't even want to say keeping it player no more because somebody gonna correct me. And say you <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we've been keeping it player since we was kids, yeah. shit before that, our grandparents. Yeah. Listen, don't I'm still Gunner's still in heavy rotation. I'm a huge Gunner fan, but y'all wearing push your pee out. I can't take it once Aquarius in me. I can't take it once everybody like it. And I think it's fucking strange that y'all adapt these lifestyles like that. My baby big thirty. <laughs> Shout out to Big 30 Free Pooh Shiesty Y'all know what it is um, Big 30 just said something about Like don't throw up my set Like you could be my fan Don't throw up my set That yeah. shit means something yeah. You come to here to Imagine a nigga They did different things for that set Listen The shit They didn't risk their lives for that motherfucker And lost their niggas lives for it And yeah, whatever no joke, You can think no whatever game. you want to think about it It's a real deal yeah. thing And if you are in Idaho Throwing up the set, that's cool. But that one time your fucking dad buy you that motherfucking ticket and you fly your dumb ass to Memphis for some summer jam to see it and you throw that sign up, you gonna get your ass whipped in that crowd. Yeah. Cause the real niggas in that gang is in the crowd. It's like, he was like, yo, you could let me, you could fuck with me, but don't throw my set up. That's not. That's a cultural thing though. You That's like, uh, like the tribe. You can't just walk up to no tribal niggas. That, they they yeah, still do that shit today. Sure. You can't just walk for up fact. and start doing that shit cause you like for it. Fact. That's why they're so offended by our Halloween costumes. Yikes. Mm. Like literally those Halloween costumes sometimes are mimicking the top chief, the highest mm, dude. Yeah. It's like, bitch, you got your titties out and red lipstick going, <laughs> take that shit off. <laughs> Emily, <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? That's disrespectful. Nobody on. gets fucked over like them. Native yeah, American. Yeah, Nobody Native American gets the fucked like the natives. Shout out to the natives. The red skins, all that type shit. And you know what? Niggas owe you something because we've been lying saying you we was half Indian our whole lives. None of us are Cherokee. It's all a big scam. <laughs> That's the crazy part. Um, here go Phelps. I'm I got Navajo. Some I'm I didn't Navajo. say me. I just said it's some <laughs> niggas. Phelps with this motherfucking Navajo. Are you from? Are you? I didn't Navajo? say me. I said it's niggas. My cousin. My cousin grandmother is straight Native American. Sleep with the dream catcher. What tribe, nigga? It start with an S, but it's not Sue. Call him. I'm not calling him. No, really. Everybody <laughs> say they're Indian, though. I do think the Indians get the... Well, not I the Indians, Indian. the natives. Excuse Native me. Americans, Native the Americans. natives, I apologize. The Native Americans. I think they get it the, the, the heart, the roughest. I don't know. It just seems like... They didn't get any like love, but I guess they did. They get casinos. Is that a real thing? I need to research. No taxes. That. It's it's little stuff, but they it's don't. Not it's not a lot of them. It's so not it's enough. like yeah, and it's not a lot of them. They're they You know what's crazy? I've never met one in real life. I've never seen a Native American. I only see him on a commercial with that one tear that comes down. And, and he's like, "Stop cutting the trees." I've never. You know, a fucking race got wiped out if you've never seen one. I've never seen a Native American in real life. I have. Sometimes you can't tell that they Native American neither, though. Bro, well, I I want to be able to tell to know that I seen one. You know why you can't tell? I think it's really where I live. Nah, you know why you can't That's tell? Why I think I've never Cause seen you them. racist. Okay, the only <laughs> moving on. Dre. <laughs> Cut that out, okay? Black people can't be racist, Dre, because we're oppressed. You know that? When oppressed are like talking about different races, especially races that might like say white people. I'm talking about a white person. Most likely, me being an oppressed race, I'm responding to bad treatment. So mm -hmm. therefore, I cannot be racist. So therefore. Again, okay, race is, is a bad term. Prejudice. 
I think we all prejudice to a certain we extent. We don't we don't have an image in our head of what an American Native American looks like. What I think is long hair, um, long <laughs> thick hair. I'm just what? Yo, the, the, what? What's that's that? wild. So ev- that's very stereotypical. I said what I think is the long You're thick thinking black stereotypical, hair. But go ahead. So what can, we're talking about what they look like. So what would I say? Honestly, we, you said them. you don't know what they look like, so you're what you're thinking is is what you're used to seeing was being portrayed because you haven't seen one. That's the because stereotype. I thought that when you're saying that you're assuming feathers or something. So I'm thinking this in a why do you, suit. why you gotta have a long nah you don't gotta have long hair just because that's like, traditional. Okay, so how would you describe a Native American? I said we don't know what an a, a American modern day Native American looks like. I said we don't know. Right. The thing, the thing, what I think about when I see them is the same thing I see in black people when I see, like, people say they have Native American in them. It goes in one ear out the other because sometimes you can kind of see the attributes, like skin color, like that thick, like, oaky skin, brown straight skin hair. or whatever. The long, thick, straight hair, really beautiful hair, especially when it's, like, super dark. Those big, brown eyes. That's what I think about when I see Native Americans, especially the skin. They just have a certain niceness to their skin. I hope that's not stereotypical. But I'm basing that off of... um you know, me never seeing one in real life that I think of, but nobody else can make it weirder but Phelps. <laughs> he sucks. He really sucks. Um, listen, I want to talk about um, the boosters in D.C. Shout out to Dre yeah, um, and Bree. Yeah, they ran up in a Montclair store. Look, we don't support stealing, but mm. damn Phelps. If it was it if you were to <laughs> have a coat <laughs> for sale, I'm sure Phelps would like to get into that because it's Amen. illegal and it's wrong. So, DM Phelps. Listen, I'm pro booster a little bit. <laughs> and I know I'm probably not supposed to be, but I don't give a fuck. And Tom's from South Philly, so he pro booster say, too. By association, you know what I'm saying? Flat out. And call this episode. <laughs> did y'all see what I'm talking about? It's a clip that went viral. These boosters are in Montclair. They're taking everything. This is what pissed me off in a couple of ex boosters that I know. On the way out, right? The girl stops and pepper sprays the security. Now, the little clip I see. The security is literally talking shit just standing there, which is very common. It's very common for somebody, while you're stealing from them, <laughs> to call you a loser or a lamb. I'm going to call the cops. You're disgusting. That's common, right? But the thing about shoplifting is really a misdemeanor in most states, in most yeah. cities. Sometimes oh, you have a certain shit. limit, like you get to fourteen ninety nine, right before 1500 Once you get to 1500 boom, it's a felony, right? Boom. Other than that, you're still a little toothpaste, you might get a ticket. What I'm saying is, is when you're in those situations with shoplifting in the legal sense of things, when you get into a physical fight or if you push somebody or if you have something that could be used as a weapon, that's what changes that charge from a misdemeanor to a fucking felony. Mm-hmm. And most of the time it's called a robbery. So old girl Mason, the security guard just changed the charge from something smaller to bigger, which was weird. And then plus he didn't look like he was doing anything. So it's like a nigga clock in the work and he tells you don't steal cool. But then if he ain't doing nothing, you just attack him. That's just weird. And you making it for the bitches that want to come back in a month. Good thing, Shaquita. <laughs> also, you had a bonnet on. You had a bonnet on, Shaquita. That's just tacky. If you want to go steal, you need to look the part, get dressed, put you some perfume on. Don't walk in the people's store smell like weed. Now, I'm not teaching you how to steal. But use your comments. I wonder sense. how the designer's stories is feeling right sense. now. They said she doubled back because that, that jacket matched her, her bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. The bonnet was crazy. Listen, you walk in the store with a bonnet smelling like black and miles, that nigga going to follow you all around that motherfucker anyway. Sure. You ain't going to get nothing about that bitch. That's how you know them bitches was different type of savages. And they had papers, pepper spray. They might have walked in there pepper spray and everything. First, this wasn't my topic, so blame everybody else. But shout out to the boosters. No, you bitches boosters. be safe. Man. You bitches be safe, man. Love the boosters. And again, we don't support shoplifting, but please DM Phelps Size because nine. he does. I want to tell you all the- and small. Yeah, and I wear large and everything, especially in my clear. Like medium. Sneakers medium size. Medium size. Trey ain't doing that. He's too good for that. He wears a medium. Um... <laughs> Listen, um, vote for Gary Chambers, serious moment out of Louisiana. He's going for, um, what is he going for? Senate. 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 Yeah, vote for him, bro. His fucking ass, he's smoking weed. I don't know if we can play it, but if we can, let's play it. Um, He's just cool. He's for change. He said every 30 seconds somebody gets arrested for weed. That makes no sense. People shouldn't go to jail for victimless crimes. You know what I mean? Like, getting high is not a crime. We already know that. And weed is pretty legal everywhere. Every fucking weird is. Yo, I'm still reading stories niggas doing 20 years for a weed case it just don't make no day, sense still sitting. and for facts crazy. you can molest a kid and get probation some point that has to change like the crimes that 
the crimes that have effects for years, you should go to prison for. for and years. I'm anti prison, but like, yo, you molest a kid, that kid's dealing that no, dealing with that effect. Why is that? For, and not only that, a kid is such an innocent person, such an easy vic, so easy to be. It bothers me. You can rape a person. Told you who made the rules. Bro, I keep saying, and I'm going to say it so I'm blue in the face, you can't get an abortion in Texas. You'll get more time, right, for giving a bitch a ride to get abortion than you will for raping a bitch to have to get that abortion. Let's say that slower one more time. You can rape a woman, get her pregnant. Abortions are illegal. If somebody gives her a ride to get that abortion, that person will get more time than the guy who started the whole problem by raping the girl. Did that make sense? All right. It don't make no sense. It don't make sense. We get it, but it don't make. Yeah, we get, we get, get it. It's fucked up though. Vote for Gary Chambers. Yeah. Shout out to Gary Chambers. Sex in Texas right now. Ain't it? We're the same age. I think. Sex in Gary. Texas is crazy right now. Um, Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Biden oh, is old as fuck. It's a couple of reasons why we here at the Don't Call Me White Girl podcast hate Joe Biden. Let me tell you, reason one. I'm from Philly and Delaware, as y'all know. Wilmington is the city of Delaware. I frequent Wilmington a lot. I frequent Wilmington a lot. I spent years in Wilmington. I did great things and bad things in Wilmington. Shout out to Wilmington. I love y'all too. I see you messaging me saying I forgot. I did in north side, west side, up top, down the bottom, on the hill, Riverside, South Bridge. Shout out to Wilmington, right? Um, Wilmington is fuck it. It's fucked up. It's fu- it's so violent and it's so small. It seems like it would be so easy to stop the crime. And I'm talking about murder. I'm not even talking about mm-hmm. drug dealing or whatever else that the politicians think are problems in these neighborhoods. Just the out and out killing people, just using guns ridiculously, getting shot for no reason. Like they're not even a target. A friend of mine was shot in the back in front of her kids years ago. Fucked up our family. It was just a horrible thing, you know. Um, so you know, it's just. And I don't mean fucked up our family like fucked up, but it was a huge thing. I mean, if, you know, in front of children, I'm talking toddlers. Affected everybody. That's fucked up. Mm-hmm. I've had a toddler tell me how his mother died more than once. Those are my nephews. Those are my family. So Wilmington is fucked. So for me, Joe Biden being from Delaware and not showing Wilmington any love, I kind of expected them to hurry up and rush in and try to clean Wilmington up. You know, like just to like, but it doesn't matter. At all. Wilmington is fucked. It's no effort. One thing about Philadelphia, I noticed when the murders go crazy, the police will park up on every corner. Mm -hmm. And the thing you can kind of ensure is that niggas think twice when they see that police car. Philadelphia would even put that RV with the police all around. There would be nobody in it. Nobody in it. But if you see that from down the street, you're not going to pull your pistol out. It makes sense. So small effort like that doesn't happen in Delaware. So for me, like I just think he's shitty just being from there. I know he's from Scranton originally, but he made his ways in Delaware. Delaware is where he really you know spend his time and he's old as fucking dirt because like dookie seem like it's newer dirt is dirt you know what i mean he old as shit he don't know what year it is nigga always stumbling and bumbling it just i don't get what the plan was on that um the nigga just said martin luther king thing the nigga just said that george floyd i don't know if you know this Drake. george the death of george floyd right made a bigger impact worldwide than the death of Dr. Martin Luther King. What was the weirdness? Are y'all <laughs> right? What he say before he say it? Because the thing about Trump was, Trump would say wild shit, but Trump was off script. Nobody wrote that shit. You know what I mean? That nigga was like, I'm going off top, y'all. They was like, no. They was like, no, I'm going off top. <laughs> and he went out there. You know what I mean? Snort three lines of Adderall, motherfucker be going. <laughs> and to be honest, I miss it a bit. I miss it. You know what my favorite thing was? It was real racist. Can I say it? China. <laughs> China. <laughs> it's like my favorite sound bite from Trump. He's a fucking I'm loser. Sure. I mean, he's a loser. He's an Good idiot, time. but he makes great television. You know what I mean? China. Please don't say that. I don't know. You're, um, POTUS, please don't say that. I mean, it is. That's what it is. China. He said it twice. <laughs> That's what made it so great. But um, we don't support Trump. We're not Trumpers here. But... um. Joey, that's what I'll call you. Um, It's hard to even compare because Dr. King's been going for a long time, 1965, I believe. So, of course, but it's like, Tom mentioned that Dr. King has a day and he has streets. In fact, you should kind of avoid Martin Luther King boulevards worldwide because you might get shot. That's just an unfortunate coinky dink. You know what I mean? But, He's more implanted in our history here. Like, my five-year-old knows who Martin Luther King is. You know what I mean? No, damn, the nigga's seven. (laughs) 
Well, Shout he knew out when he was five. Smush. Shout out to Smush. He knew when he was five. He knew when he was five. <laughs> Shut up. Keep it rolling. The second kid is not the same. Second kid, like yeah. the first kid is like you pat their back so softly, you lay them there softly, the cribs new. Second kid, you know what I mean? <laughs> Pull out the it. drawer, blanket in the drawer, we don't need a playpen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shout out to Swish, man. Yeah, shout out to Swish, but as I'm saying, I dropped it. Like it wasn't like, ooh, be careful, be careful. It was like, hold your brother. And she would be holding it, me, we hanging. Your second kid, you don't really. Hopefully you'll see that soon. The second kid is like what? fucking. You know what somebody, I mean? somebody. Like you left him in the car, but you went and got him real quick. Somebody I know made a uh, made a good point about the Joe Biden thing, and it looked like foreshadowing. What? George Floyd will, will probably my friend, uh, my man Hawk said it. George Floyd will probably get a holiday before Michael Max. Most likely, um, I don't know. What, what was the point of that, Phelps? I'm just saying, there's many people in Black history way before George Floyd that that don't get. Nothing. Like, right. But I mean, well, see, mm-hmm. Malcolm X's history is a little... Because oh, in the yeah, beginning of him, um, like his beginning journey before he oh, went to, you know, a slam. But I, but I, I know yeah. we know that. But I think that's what stops him from getting those kind of corporate things. Because it's, you can listen to him say things about white people and about Jews mm-hmm. and about like that. That's just like Farrakhan. Farrakhan says great things. But he also has said stuff like the white man is the devil and stuff like that. So for the white man to approve you, it kind you kind of had to be a Martin Luther King. Because honestly, back in them days... You talking about two leaders? I would have been rolling with my. I would have totally been. Let's get guns. Let's shoot yeah. them back. Let's like like all that sitting there, letting niggas just do shit to you. Not my thing. Shout out to Dr. King. Peace and all that. But I wouldn't have been with that. I'm not with that now. I think we should fight them niggas back. What I think about George Floyd is George Floyd is a martyr. Martyr. So yeah. to mm-hmm. to compare a martyr who doesn't even know that that's what's going to happen to them to a motherfucker that dedicate their life to self to service, yeah. Yeah. it's disrespectful in a way. It's just like taboo. You don't say shit like that. And I guess to his thought, it makes a bigger worldwide impact. Maybe because it's 2021. Was that 2020? 2020. Yeah, 20. so it's 2020, so it's Twitter, we got everything, so the whole world knows, and mm-hmm. then... And I don't like that. That's negative for his family, I feel like. What? them Him doing that is making it negative for George Floyd's family, because people go on and start saying shit. Oh, yeah. I it's apples know. and oranges to me. I don't know. I, I think a lot of the hate will go where it's supposed to go, which is Joe Biden. It was just Hopefully. stupid to say. He's a martyr. I don't... You you cannot criticize George Floyd, a regular person living his life that die in a terrible exactly. way. I mean, if you're going to die, what a way to die, you know, because his name goes infamy. I mean, his daughter you know his family they can but you can't compare a person like that living their life going through shit to a person that dedicated time and service like you got it joey please let them write let them young people write that let them young people write that let kamala malama lie let her talk because (laughs) she's younger and she's hipper because she damn sure was able to talk she was damn sure able to talk and make us believe that something would happen. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Wasn't that a good one? You spending. almost made niggas think you was in there with them converses. Now, that was good. Hot sauce you slick. Hot sauce and Ooh, all that. You Kamala, a good mm-hmm. bitch. Go Her ahead and write, had write something else. We like she had that. single soul Tims. We knew. She had love. No, I shit. did not know. I thought that Kamala was going. I mean, I wasn't a fan of Kamala because she's a cop. Prosecutors are cops. I'm not pro prosecutor. I don't fuck with prosecutors. But and then her stats came out about how many people she locked up. Mm-hmm. I, uh, uh, I threw up in my mouth. I'm not with it. Like double digits. Like she got this amount of niggas double digits. I was like, yeah. I, I think that's why that uh, bitch. Buddy dumped her. Wasn't she dating my? Uh, was my was the my, ball hit Montel? Montel Williams. I don't know. Nah, I have no clue. Montel Williams. I'm about to say I don't know. She, she yeah, popped in a few know versus who she battles. She her ass up. She Started cute. Crip walking and shit. And she cute. The blazes. Uh, the sword. outfits are shitty, but you know I feel scanned by you, Kamala. La. I really feel like <laughs> let down by you. Come you on. know, like I feel like you don't do shit. It's just annoying. And I'm a woman in a nigga, so it's like you can't, you know, do a little something for a nigga. God damn. Somebody need to write Joey stuff and somebody needs to have a big sign the whole speech that say two zero two two. So he could be like on point with it. 2022 and then I y'all need to get him like extra legs because he he's very stumbly he how old is he 70 i was about to say he an 80 year old white man he got some kind of condition they're not telling us about his something he got some i don't know what the nigga got he in office similar. so they're not telling us his health report but it's there he mess oh. Leoma. what's that word <laughs> <laughs> what's the one with the rashes where they get the big rashes mercer the big no no it's for older people eczema 
No. I don't know. I know <laughs> varicose veins. He got them. I have them. Shut up. Oh, my bad. Um, like this nigga, please. Uh, yo, that felt. was not for you. That you was felt. not. I have varicose veins, and a lot of these fat yellow girls was, watching got varicose veins. Was, don't feel bad about your veins because he mentioned come it. At them. I, I know that hurts. It was triggering. It's all right, Lucille. Um, Brittany Renner. <laughs> listen, shout out to Brittany Renner. Brittany Renner. This episode's dedicated to you. That's my new thing. Clearly, because y'all know my last couple episodes was dedicated to. Hitman Holla. <laughs> um, Brittany Renner, um, shout out to Brittany Renner. She went on Academics Podcast and got them fresh and fit niggas together. Even the one with the frisbee size missing <laughs> from the receding hairline. Guys ass together. This bitch, I had to write it down. She said, um, you know, they said something to her about how she's not special. She asked them eye to eye. And I love, that's what I love about it because I get that experience all the time. Niggas different on the internet. They different on live. They different on their shows. They on somebody else's show. She's right across the table from him looking in his eyes saying things like, what do you get out of women when you tell them that they're not special? After saying she's not special, she's t- she's typical. Um and he was stuttering. That's the best part. She caught that nigga off guard. He didn't know what to say. And even if she didn't catch him off guard, she still stumbled his fucking ass. And I enjoyed watching. She said to him, um, what do you get out of telling girls they're not special? Um, do you think that you're special? Was Frisbee missing hair, bitch ass nigga? <laughs> um, she said, if I called you a bitch ass nigga, how would it make you feel? Because it would make me feel good. So do you feel good saying things like you're not special to women? Again, he's not saying anything back because he can't. She said, in fact, you're not special, Mr. Missing Hair, bitch. Um, you're forgettable. Your podcast setup is corny. The setup is forgettable. And the name of the podcast, <laughs> Fresh and Fit, is under fucking well, man. Yeah, it was that serious. I had to write it down because I wanted to get this nigga words correctly. Shout out to Brittany Renner. You did a great job, bitch. We going to send you a t-shirt. A white man wearing me t-shirt. And you deserve it, girl. I know you were a small girl. <laughs> I like it. I like yeah, that. I, like it I love it. it. You already know how I feel about that. Oh, I enjoyed it so much. Look, we got to wrap it up here. Um, I want to manifest, because I've been forgetting to manifest, but you bitches remind me all the time. I want to manifest a good Valentine experience. Like, I've had a little Valentine's Day, and I get gifts and all that, but an experience where it's like we loving each other, we have fun, and we fucking real nasty. You want the rose petals to the mm. bed? Mm-hmm. I ain't mm-hmm. into that. I kicked that shit out the way. I want like you only got we buzz to the bed. My <laughs> shit, shit that I like, an experience that I would enjoy. Maybe like massages, or I like taking a bath together, or going somewhere really cool that I like that I never went. Or like I don't even like care. I don't like Dre when they jerk when they when you get in the thing and the horses in front of you and you watch it doodle the whole time. Mm-hmm. I don't like or that. Carriage shit. One, one of my exes took me on a helicopter ride through the city. Guess why I liked it? I'm such a hood rat. The guy was like, where are you from? I was like, North Philly. He was like, you want to go? We went over top of North Philly. He was like, there's the projects. I was like, ah. <laughs> I did the Philly helicopter tour. It was cute. The pictures was lit. But um, that was cool. But yeah, I'm manifesting it. Like a good Valentine experience. Um, and more deals and more exposures. I like doing them shows. I've always thought about doing radio. Um, it's very fast paced. But I would love to do that again. Maybe they give me a job. Wink, wink. Radio perfect for you. I think so, too. I think I got a face for radio. Mm. Bop, bop. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a voicemail and I got a DM. I'm going to do my dark side of my DM real quick. Um, A guy DM'd me the other day. <clears throat> And I got in trouble on Instagram, so y'all better follow that backup page. Don't call me white girl with no L. It's always a letter. Yeah, Angela, you gonna get it popping because she has someone she tagged on the uh, list. Thank you. Oh, th- eh, maybe. Um, <laughs> follow it. Don't call me white girl with no L. Follow that page girl. if you hear it. Um, this guy DM me. Um, his name has Wavy in it. He's not Wavy because he had on Uggs, the one with no top. Like the canned soda Uggs. <laughs> Whatever. Um, the DM was at Friday, 3.03 p.m., can I put the, my dick in the back of your throat? And I went on to tell him, I, and my response was, why disrespect me? What's the point? What do you get out of it? Is that disrespectful to you? We have a full back and forth. I, I tell him, I'm going to ask Instagram what they think. I post it. He all about it, about it. Once I post it in a picture of him with this colorful ass outfit with the canned soda Uggs on, then he's get the sweat and, and he reports my page. And they take the post down, and I DM him that picture of the report. And guess what he said? What? You start playing dirty. I had to pay dirty back. These, These niggas is rats. You's a fucking <laughs> rat, bitch. You's a rat, bitch. I know you told on that nigga you caught that case with, he motherfucker. Corny. He had on Uggs and then talk about niggas, trying to put his dick in somebody. Not mouth. just Uggs, babe. He bitch. had the Uggs with no top. The round fat ones that you wear for slippers, and they were yellow. 
And he had on a Playboy outfit that man to a blind dreads. I bet you 4P, ain't you, motherfucker? 4PF. From, Four Am, from Arizona, you fucking lame. Um, shout out to you. Um, and shout out to you being a fucking rat. But and shout out to Instagram for being unfair. But that's the DM. Let me listen to the voicemail right quick. I love you guys at home. Keep listening. I see them numbers. I appreciate y'all. Share it with your cousins and your friends, even the bitches that don't like podcasts. Copy the link and text it. Put it in your group text, <laughs> bitch. Make everybody laugh, not just you. Don't be so selfish, whore. Hey, Mona. I'm calling from Louisiana. I'm not just want to know what you think about staying with your man or living with your man before marriage. Um, me and my guy, we were talking. I told him that I would keep my apartment until I get married. Um, you could sit at night, you could even have a drawer, but you cannot get a key to my apartment, and we're not playing house. You know, I've just seen a lot of couples, shit go sour between them when they start living together. Then again, I never lived with a man. So I would love to know your perspective, if I should give it a chance or if I should stick with my gut. Love you. Bye. I love you too, baby girl. You're very well spoken. Stick to your guns for sure. Um, You know, I feel like black men do well with with structure in a way. Like I think black men do well with when they know they can't pull certain shit with you. So I feel like right. if marriage is your goal and you make it so we're not going to live together until marriage, it will push them towards marriage faster or at least to appreciate that. So many women are having that marriage experience. I've lived that marriage life two three times in my lifetime for years and i didn't get married i didn't have that experience that that family thing where our names change and things like that but why would he marry if i'm giving him the full game already yeah. i even bought a house with my ex like we literally did the whole thing baby house everything no marriage and i also felt like we would have been engaged forever because i used to say to him fuck the way and let's just get go to justice of the peace and he would say find everything you know what i mean mm. it was like he don't want to get married for real and i meant what i said the other week when i said that the guy will never marry you'll be engaged forever because that's what it is for the most part relationships i need y'all to know at home you do what's best for you like i can give you your opinion all you want but like i said to be honest i've never been fucking married and i've been shacked the fuck up frying chicken sucking dick in that bitch okay Man. and i didn't pay the fucking mortgage bitch i paid the wi-fi you know how i get down I ain't pay that rent. <laughs> I don't know why you splitting it with him. We'll talk about that next week. Um, either way, um, what's good for the goose ain't good for the gander. You have to do what's best for you, period. If you have those standards and that's the way you envision your life, then keep it that way. I know it's women watching this saying, you don't even get to know that nigga until you live with him. It's a bona fide fact. You don't know how bad you hate that motherfucker until you hear him grind his teeth in his sleep every day for three months but i don't think you should rest. i think you should stick to your guns i appreciate you i love you too i love all of y'all i'll catch y'all next fucking week same place same time um and that's that <laughs>